Welcome to our new series, All About Ship Components, where we help you understand the things you're putting into your ship and what all the numbers mean. Hopefully, we can help you make some decisions about what to put in your ship. Remember, digital ships aren't imaginary. Digital ships are imagine necessary. Every month we do a giveaway. This month's giveaway is unknown, but it will be a ship and we will announce it soon. So to enter, subscribe to this channel, like or dislike a video, leave a comment on a video from this month, meaning May. And for the full giveaway details, make sure you visit our Billionaire Ninjas Discord or our social media at Ninjas Leap. Today we are doing a video on the basics of ship components and ship component manufacturers. So first, we'll go over the classes, then grades, then sizes, then what the components do, then we'll end with the manufacturers. Now, I'll caveat this video that this is just what I've been able to collect from the many corners of the internet as well as CIG's website. This is not standardized yet. We are not going to go in depth on each particular component. I'm gonna have separate videos for each particular component, what it does and go in depth. So this is just the basics. This will be a series, so we'll go into everything from there. So to start, you have five classes of ship parts. You have civilian, industrial, military, stealth, and competition. For civilian parts, these are the most common parts and are considered the jack of all trades, master of none type of part. These come standard in a lot of non-combat and non-industry related ships. For industrial parts, these are high output and low wear parts with very high emissions. You will light up like a Christmas tree, but you will get a lot of use out of the parts. These tend to come standard on ships used for commercial activity like mining, salvage, and cargo hauling. For military parts, these are generally the closest to the highest quality parts as far as expected functionality. They also wear at an average rate rather than a low rate or a high rate. However, their emissions will be almost as high as industrial parts and they will cost an arm and a leg compared to other parts. For stealth parts, these have low functionality, low wear, and they vastly reduce power consumption and vastly reduce signatures to make the ship hard to detect by others. For competition parts, these have the highest performance of any parts on the list, but they also wear faster than any parts on the list and they light up like a Christmas tree. And again, they'll be expensive. For ship grades, this is going from basically the quality of the type of part. Starting with grade A, you might have a civilian grade A part or you could have all the way down to a civilian grade D part. And sometimes it's listed as grade one instead of grade A or grade four instead of grade D. So for ship grades, grade A or grade one has the best performance and these can have subcomponents. Grade B or grade two has high performance and those can have subcomponents. And then there's grade C or grade three, which has average performance and grade D or grade four, which has low performance. This is as of May 1st, 2024, this list is so if you're watching this after just make sure you check to make sure they haven't added any other grades like a grade f i don't think they would but just check to make sure um so all classes of ship parts can be put into all types of ships also as of may may 1st so just check to make sure they haven't changed that now let's talk about ship sizes so size zero is snub ships or vehicles uh depends on where the, the snub ship fits in the size category, but it's mostly snub ships or vehicles. Size one is small ships or light ships. Size two is medium ships. Size three is large or heavy ships. And size four is capital ships. Now size three could also be considered subcapital. So we don't really say subcapital because I think that confuses a few people so we say size three is large or heavy ships but you if you hear the term subcapital somewhere around it's probably a size three ship ship components are the next category those go from size one to size 10 with one being the smallest and 10 being the highest there have been mentions of up to size 12 but i can't confirm that from any solid source so we're going to go with size one to size 10. Then there are sub items that go inside of each part. You might've heard me mention this when I was talking about ship grades and how they have sub components. 
So subcomponents are something that haven't been kind of fleshed out enough yet to really talk about, but um, they play a part in efficiency, protection, and detection. But again, that isn't fleshed out yet. So we're not gonna include those in this video until they're more fleshed out and then we'll give those their own video. We're also not including ship weapons or personal weapons. So make sure you're subscribed and you hit the bell icon so you don't miss those when we talk about those in their own videos. Next, let's talk about what each of these ship parts do. Power plant, this is the main source of energy for the ship. It is where everything needs to be connected to in order to get power. Now, there is something else that goes with this and we'll talk about that a little bit later and those are batteries. Then there's the ship cooler. This is what reduces heat from all the other vehicle components. Now, you might wonder, well, why do I need to reduce heat well a so you don't start fires b because if you reduce heat that also reduces your heat signature which makes you a little bit more stealthy and it makes other ships harder to detect you and c the cooler your ship parts are the more efficient they will operate and certain coolers uh, can even reduce the amount that your weapons ramp up to so you your ship your your weapons won't overheat as quickly if you have a better cooler in the ship. Then you have your shield generator. So shield generators generate a protective barrier of energy around a ship's hull, which deflects energy weapons until it reaches a certain amount of damage and it shuts down. The barrier also reduces the speed of ballistic projectiles, making them less likely to penetrate the hull. Now we've reached batteries. So batteries, you can think of these as a chargeable temporary power plant with less output and a lower detectable signature. These are like real batteries in that they run out of power much quicker than a dedicated power plant. So they are only for temporary use and redundancy. Then we have quantum drives. These allow a spacecraft to travel at 20% light speed by generating a Chan Eisen field to manipulate the quantum medium. This allows planet to planet travel normally within a star system. Then we have jump drives or jump modules. These are installed into a quantum drive to safely open a jump point, which allows for uses of travel between star systems. So quantum drives are from planet to planet, planet to moon, inside of one star system. Jump drives are between star systems, from one, so from one star system to the next star system just to be clear, because sometimes those get mixed up by people. Then we have mining lasers. So these are used to fracture rock and extract minerals. There are other ship parts we're not mentioning here because at least up to this point, they are not swappable or they deserve their own videos. So these are radars, computers, gravity generators, life support, fuel intakes, hydrogen fuel tanks, quantum fuel tanks, fuel pods. They're either not swappable, as in you can't change them out of your ship, they, they come with the hull of the ship, or they're going to get their own type of video where we kind of explain what they do, so we're not including those in this video. So we're, we're, trying, we're, we're trying to focus on the parts that you can actually take out of the ship and replace in the ship. So these are things you should be able to purchase from a store and put inside of your ship. Lastly, let's talk about ship part manufacturers. These are the in-game companies that make the ship parts that are sold to you. So first we have Ace Astrogation. They are a spacecraft component manufacturer known for making the F7s thrusters and they mainly make quantum drives. I'll stop here and I'll say that ship part manufacturers might make more than the things that I'm listing, but because this is a ship component, video i'm only going to talk about this the the spacecraft components that they make so ace astrogation they make quantum drives but as i said in the beginning they also make thrusters so i'll, I'll try to keep it to just the components that they actually make that go into the vehicles or or the ships not necessarily everything that they make so those will be included in other videos moving on acom Spacecraft component manufacturer, they make power plants and coolers. 
ages dynamics. They make military, personal, and capital spacecrafts and components. They mostly make power plants and coolers. Amon and Reese Company. Now, this one's a weird one. This is actually A&R Armaments, and that's kind of what A&R stands for, Amon and Reese. And they either go by Amon and Reese Company or A&R Armaments, but they're the same company. And this, this is a spacecraft component manufacturer. They mainly make power plants and engines. I'm only including engines in there because sometimes I think that's going to be a, a thing in the future. Um, where engines are, are probably going to be swappable, but I'm just including it just to, to show that they're one of the few people that is listed as actually working on engines. So the components that they work on are power plants, but they also work on engines. Then you have Art Corp, spacecraft component manufacturer. They also own their own planet. I don't know how relevant that is. I just think it's cool. <laughs> and then they work on quantum drives. Then you have Ascension Astro, spacecraft component manufacturer focusing on stealth. They mostly make shield generators. Then you have Basilisk, spacecraft component and spacecraft armor manufacturer. They mostly make shield generators. Then you have Bearing Applied Technology, spacecraft component manufacturer. They make shield generators, EMP generators, and computers. Then you have Gorgon. It's either Gorgon or Gorgon Defender Industries. And these, these are spacecraft component manufacturers, and they make shield generators. Then you have Graycat Industrial. They make land vehicles, mining equipment, and spacecraft components. They are responsible for mining lasers and tractor beams. Now, tractor beams are going to get their own videos, but I just wanted to say that I just wanted to include it here so you know that at some point we're going to give tractor beams their own video. But right now, I don't think there's enough for it to qualify for its own video. But tractor beams are coming. And what tractor beams do is essentially they allow you to grab something with kind of this beam and move it around to where it's supposed to be. And they'll have different weight limits and stuff like that in the future. So that's why I'm waiting um, to, to do a full video on those. Also, there's not that many manufacturers that do them, that make them right now. So again, that, that's gonna get its own video or be included in a, in a second part of this video later. Moving on, Group A Novo Paradigm. So this is maybe, maybe set a different way. It could be Group Novo, uh, paradigm but they are a spacecraft component manufacturer now they make spacecraft engines scanners and radars now i also think that they make components but i just couldn't find the information on which specific ones they they make so i'm saying they make radar scanners and spacecraft engines for now um so just take that with a grain of salt and we'll see if they come up later as making um, some more components. Then you have JSPAN. These are, these are the spacecraft component manufacturers, and they focus on coolers. Then you have Juno Starwork. They are a spacecraft component manufacturer. They make power plants, coolers, and quantum drives. Klaus and Werner. This is primarily a weapons manufacturer, but they have made power plants so that's why I'm including them here, because you might think of Klaus and, and Werner if you've, if you've used weapons, and you might think, oh, they make weapons, but they also make power plants. That's why they're on this list. Then there's Lightning Power Limited. This is a spacecraft component manufacturer. They make power plants and coolers. Then you have Ramp Corporation, spacecraft component manufacturer. They make quantum drives. Robert Space Industries, the original creator of the quantum drive. And of course, they make quantum drives. Then you have Saga Data Systems. They are a remote-controlled computer manufacturer, and they make drones. So I included them just so I could talk about drones. Drones, again, haven't been fleshed out quite yet, so they will get their own video when drones are more fleshed out and more uh, entities are making drones, more manufacturers are making drones. So they are not included in this video, but I included Saga Data Systems just because I wanted to also expand your horizons and, and talk about things that you might not know are going to be components in the future. And I also think, as I, as I mentioned 
when I talked about uh, Group A Novo paradigm. I, th I do think radars and scanners and engines will be components in the future. We just haven't had any confirmation that that's legitimately going to be the case. Or maybe we have and I just haven't seen it yet. Moving on. Sakura Sun or Sakura Sun. This is a spacecraft component manufacturer. They make power plants and they make batteries. SEAL Corporation, spacecraft component manufacturer. They make shield generators and they make mining lasers. Shubin Interstellar, another spacecraft component ma manufacturer, but they make mining lasers. Then you have Soli or Banu Soli. They make spacecrafts and they make spacecraft components. And when they make components, it's mostly shield generators. Then there's Storall, spacecraft component and storage component manufacturer. So they make cargo containers. Again, I'm including them because I'm not sure if this will be expanded upon in the future, but I'm pretty sure it will be. And this might be a component that becomes part of the major zeitgeist of Star Citizen. So I wanted to include cargo containers Again, just trying to give you a preview of things that might be coming in the future. And now you know Storall is one of the people who makes those. And I also think Storall might end up with a tractor beam or something like that in the future as well. But that just hasn't been confirmed yet, at least that I can find. And then you have Tarsus Electronics, spacecraft component manufacturer. They make quantum drives. Thermite Concern, now they're primarily a weapons manufacturer, but they also make mining lasers. So, included them here. Then you have Tyler Design and Tech, spacecraft component manufacturer. They make power plants and coolers. Then you have Ytech, spacecraft component manufacturer. They make quantum drives. Then you have Win Castle Propulsion, spacecraft component manufacturer. They make coolers. Then Wills Op Systems, spacecraft component manufacturer. They make radars. Yorm, they make shield generators, and they are a spacecraft component manufacturer so look out soon our next few videos we will be talking about each one of these components separately and in more detail but at least now you know the basics we'll also be doing videos on fpf fps weapons and ship weapons soon so look out for those but these next videos that come out are going to be going more in depth about each one of these parts and specifically we'll be focusing on power plants there'll be a whole video on power plants a whole video on coolers, a whole video on shield generators, a whole video on batteries. Maybe that might be included with power plants, depending on how much information is available for batteries at the time. Then there'll be a whole video on quantum drives and jump drives. Those will be put into the same video. And then there will be a whole video on mining lasers. And I might also include a little bit of information uh, on some other things that are related. So when I talk about uh, the subcomponents, I might also talk about radars, computers, um, and gravity generators, you know, all those things. It depends on how much information is available. But radars are really gonna be where you get your scanning from. Um, and I don't know if that's gonna be a part that we can swap out soon or ever, but it might just be something that's included with the hull of the ship. But those things I'll, I'll talk about as more information becomes available. All right, that is it for this one. Stay tuned for the next one where we'll go and break down these things a little bit more. This has just been a brace, uh, uh, a basic breakdown of everything. Uh, so you can kind of have an overview. And now you can go and check out those other videos where we get a little bit more into the details of each. That is it for this one. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.